Hello, today we're going to learn how to make the wipe that you see on screen. It's great as a transition and you could also use it as an intro if you add the optional text. Great, let's get started. Okay, so now we can see the Alight Motion 2.6 interface. You do need Alight Motion 2.6 for this tutorial. Uh, if you do not have it, please go to Google Play and download. The reason that we need 2.6 is because of the fact that we are going to use hexagon array right here. Wonderful. Now I'm going to go over to elements and ooh, you can see some of my secrets here, Shh, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to create two elements. Actually, we're going to create duplicates of the two elements that you see at the top of the screen here. We're going to create a hexagon wipe and we're going to create a text title. Okay. Um, the reason why we're making them elements is that elements are reusable pieces of content. Elements are great to make just little bits and pieces that you make once, and then you can just throw it wherever you want, whenever you need it. It's really convenient. So you don't have to do the same thing over and over again. Now I'm going to make a new one now to show you, but normally I would just use the wipe that I had already made. Anyways, so we're on elements, so we're going to start to create a new element. And instead of new element one, I'm going to call this hexagon wipe uh, tutorial. Okay, just to make sure it's different from the other one. And I'm going to make it 16.9, that's my preference, uh, 1080 and 60 FPS. Those are all my preference. Whatever you want to work with, you should do that. Uh, I choose 60 FPS because it looks a little bit crisper, I find. If you want it to look maybe not as crisp, but more smooth and flowy, you might want to choose 30 or 24 and use motion blur. It's really up to you. These are the settings that I like. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create and we now have our blank screen for our tutorial. All we're going to do now is we're going to go to shape, add shape, and add a square. I'm going to drag it so it fills the screen. And believe it or not, this is the only layer we need for this whole effect, except for the text. Of course, we don't want to see just this dull gray square. So let's go to color and fill and liven it up a little bit. Let's put a gradient. So instead of solid fill, I'll go to gradient fill. I like the diagonal the way it is, so I'm going to leave it. For the top left, I want it to be yellow. Again, personal preference, but I want it to be a really bright yellow. Yeah, I want it to burn your eyes. I don't want anybody's eyes burnt, okay? Do not go out there burning anybody's eyes. Don't want that. For the other one, I want a really vibrant green. That's pretty good, but again, I'm going to push it, yeah, just a little bit more. So uh, we have sort of like a lime effect going on here. Wonderful. So that's all we need to do for color and fill. Next, what we're going to do is add all of our effects. Let's start off right now by going to effects, add effect. And the first thing we want to do is add a wipe. Now I have it here in my favorites because uh, I made a mistake and had to start over, but you can find it under matte mask and key, sorry, and uh, using wipe. With the wipe, what we want is we want uh, the whole square to come out in from off the screen from the left and then disappear to the right, just like we saw at the beginning of the video. So to do that, I'm going to use the end slider right here. I'm going to add a keyframe, but I'm going to go to a minute and I'm going to add another keyframe. Oh, and there's something actually I forgot to do. Let's actually stretch this out to about three seconds. That'll give us enough time to work with three seconds. Perfect. Oh, and sometimes this happens. All you have to do is press the extend button. There we go. Perfect. So we have a three second shape. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. Anyways, heading back in effects, in wipe, under end. Uh, at the one second mark, we want our transition to have finished. And at the zero second mark, we want to see nothing. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to make it so that there's animation between these two keyframes. Uh, we're going to go from end and we're going to go all the way down, drag this back. And let's go all the way to minus 50 because later on we might decide we want to blur or do other things and we just don't want to chance it being on the screen. And you can see, ah, there we go. If we press play, we can see this coming on screen. Wonderful. 
Now, uh, I want to change the easing curves so that it kind of zooms into the screen and then slows down right at the last minute. Ooh, that's much better. Yeah, I like that. Okay, uh, and so we're gonna use that curve for that. If you have not used easing curves before, see getting started uh, number two, I believe. Uh, that video will be on our YouTube channel. And that will go into the details of animation, keyframes, easing, all of that. But just for now, all you need to know is that uh, if you have two keyframes of the same type with different values, you will animate between them. Now, let's go to the second second and let's do the same thing. Except this time we want to do this with start um, because we want the left side to disappear to the right. So let's add a keyframe on two seconds because that's where I want this to start. And we'll go to the end, add another keyframe and we will push this all the way off the screen. We'll go down to easing and note that if you are not between two keyframes of the same type and if those keyframes are not active, you will not actually see any graph down here. So make sure you're between two active keyframes and then we'll do this. All right, there we go. So that should, that should speed us, speed us in and speed us out. Wonderful. And this second right here is just free time and nothing's happening. This wipe looks okay, but I kind of want to make it a little bit blurrier. And I want you to take a guess as to why. So stop the video, put your guess in the comments why you think I'm making this blurrier, and then see later if you're right. And don't edit your comment if you were wrong. Actually, you can edit your comment, it's cool. I'll like it. I'll be like, wow, you're so smart, it'll be great. So you can do whatever you want, you're good. Now, what we have here is we have a soft wipe that comes on the screen here and then disappears off the screen at the end. And if you wanna play through, here we are. Oh, let's play that again. We'll put it on loop and play it once or twice. Right, hmm, that looks pretty good actually as it is. But of course, it would not be a hexagon wipe tutorial if there was no hexagon array. So let's add that next. Now, it's right here uh, under my favorites because I used it before. Um, but for people looking for it for the first time, go to procedural, then choose hexagon array. Now, this doesn't quite look like what we want. So we're just going to have to change a few of the settings. Let's go over here where we can actually see um, the transparent parts in the background as well as the foreground. I wanna make the size a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make that about six, just so there's more detail. I think I also want to change the color because uh, solid is not really working for me. So we're gonna to go to layer and then we're going to go down and let's see, change the blend to overflow. Oh, now it's starting to look like something, right? Overflow takes anything that's outside a hexagon and just renders it as uh, clear, uh, transparent. And we also want to do one more thing. And this is probably the most important part. Uh, let me go up to make sure that we've done everything else. size. Uh, yeah, okay, that looks okay. Uh, one more thing we want to do is we want to scale using layer alpha to this. Ah, uh, now you see what's going on, right? So the reason that we had the blur, the feathering from before, is that depending on the opacity value underneath the hexagon, the size of the hexagon will change. So things that are more transparent will have smaller hexagons. Things that are less transparent will have larger hexagons. And so what you have is this sort of like building effect that you can see here. Now, there's one other thing I would like to change and that, that is I'd like to put the line width to zero uh, because I don't want to see any lines when everything's full. Okay, so we have two effects now. It's time to add on the third. Let's go all the way down to, where was it? Procedural, sorry and then go down to radial rays, wonderful. This will give us the ray effect that we saw before. Um, now, let's turn this up to 15. Again, this is personal preference. I will say this with absolutely everything, it's personal preference. 
Um, I'm going to change the color to yellow, but I want it to be a really bright yellow. Great. Um, I'm going to change blending mode to screen and um, just to make it a little bit lighter in the future. Now we can go to wiggle. I'm going to make these a little wobbly. If you keep going, you get some pretty cool effects actually. But that's a bit too much for me. I think I just want a little bit of wiggle on it. Just a little bit. Oh, there we go. So in radial arrays, now we have something called phase. Let's tap this to highlight it. And then we can add a keyframe there. And at one second, I think I'd like to go to three. That was one that I found that worked well before. And that seems to have a pretty good speed. Yeah, ooh, I like that. And then let's go down to two and I'll set that to maybe six. I think three per second was a pretty good speed. And then I'll change this one to nine. So we're animating over fa phase. So it'll look like, ooh, it looks like they're going in. Ooh, that's pretty cool. But instead of having them go in, I kind of want them to fade a little bit. I want them to just sort of like ooze into each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add radial rays again. Move here so I can see it. Again, go to 15. Uh, with leave that the same angle. Again, make that yellow. Oops. But make it a brighter yellow. And then, uh, oh, that's a good color. And then I'll set the blending mode to screen again. Ah, right. Yeah, that's why I set it to screen. I remember now. So you can see the rays with each other. That makes sense. That makes sense. And then I'm going to set the wiggle to about 150 here, which it was before. 150 is about that. It was, I think it was 150, 156. We can make it roughly the same. And we'll leave the frequency and we'll keyframe the phase on the other side here. So we will go here, we'll go to nine. And then add a keyframe. Then at one second here, we'll go down to six. Ooh, this is looking different. And we'll go down to three. Ooh, so let's see how that looks. Oh, those are way too bright. They look cool though. All right, so what I'm going to do, and sometimes this happens, it's not always easy to get exactly the same, same thing again, but that's okay. It's experimenting. Let's put that down to about, let's put that down to about 10. And let's actually go to the other radial rays and also put that down to about 10%. That's probably better. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Ooh, actually they could probably come up a little bit more. Let's go maybe to 25. Oops. So this one's at 25. Yep. Sometimes when you have two, it's hard to remember which one you went to. Ooh. Make that 25. Oh. Sorry, OCD kicking in. Great. Yeah, now you have something that looks like it blurs in and out a bit. Yeah, Ooh, I actually kind of like that effect more than the other one. But of course, again, you can play around with this and uh, take your time with it. Ooh, I like that. Great. Now, one more thing I'd like to add on top of it, just to give it a little bit of oomph. Something a little bit more striking is I'm going to add RGB split. This is one of my favorites. Now, RGB split, what it does is it takes the channels and uh, the R, G, and B channels, of course, splits them off from each other. So if we go right here, even with just like the basic effect here, at the, the default value is just that. Oh, I, could, I think I could leave it like that, the default value. Uh, we can see how it affects the coming in. Doesn't really affect it much here, but then it affects it going out again. And I kind of like how that looks on the edge there. So let's play it through. Okay, so now we just have one more thing to do. 
So we have an intro, a middle, and an end. Uh, we just have to tell a light motion where those intro, middle, and end are. So let's go to one second and let's zoom this out so it's easier to get there. One second and then we'll go to under uh, this element settings, not for projects, so they'll look a little bit different. Uh, we're going to go mark end of intro and that marks the end of the introduction. So this part right here is designated as the intro and if we go to two seconds, we can mark start of outro and in the middle, uh, whenever we stretch this in time, so if we want to make it 10 seconds or 20 seconds long, uh, the intro and outro will remain the same, but the middle will stretch based on whatever you need. I'm going to go to loop and stretch for that one. And so what will happen is if I make it four or five seconds longer, let's say, um, it will loop through the animation that we just have. And if with loop and stretch, if it's not quite right on exactly uh, an even multiplier of a loop, it'll stretch all the loops so that you don't really notice that there's a problem and try to make the gap seamless. So I'm going to use loop and stretch here. And what that will do is it will loop over time more effectively. Great. So that's how you make the wipe. Now let's go on and make the text that goes on top of it. Let's go create. And right here, I'm going to call this text title. And I made this 69, 60 FPS, 1080p, just like I did the other ones, just for consistency. Although it doesn't really matter with elements, uh, they'll adapt to the frame rate of your project. But for me, I just like to see how it looks. Uh, live as it is, but of course you can change that in your projects and it'll react smoothly to that. So let's go to text and I'm going to put in some text here. You can put anything you want. It's your transition, it's your intro, whichever, however you want to use it. I'm going to change that to a light motion. Maybe make that about 56 and extend up the box a bit. Yeah, let's center that just in case. And I'm going to change to a font. Oh, uh, if you're not connected to the internet, you can see that sometimes. I'm going to change to Muli Black. And I'm going to change this to White. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so we have this text. We have it's one second long. That's all we really need. Uh, as we talked about before with retiming, uh, we can stretch it, make it whatever time we want as long as we set our retiming marks right. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to right now take this text and I'm going to copy it a few times. So this top layer here is going to be the layer that we're using uh, that we're going to see, but I want to create the custom blur underneath it. And to do that, what we can do is take other text layers. So I will go up here and go duplicate layer. I can actually do this duplicate layer, duplicate layer, duplicate layer. Great. So what we have is we have the top text layer and then we have these layers down here, which I'm going to blur. Um, so I'm not really going to do anything with these layers, except I'm going to go to move and transform and move it down a little bit. Move and transform. And I'm going to move this one just a little bit further down from that. Make sure you use, make sure you use the red lines to guide you. I'm going to go to the next one and move it down a bit further than that. And then we're going to use the last one to move it down even more. All right, this doesn't really look like much at the moment, but trust me, I'm going to change these colors. I kind of want to do something else. So I have a little bit of a stripe sort of thing going on. Uh, so I'm going to go color and fill and I'm going to make this one orange and then go to color and fill and make this one yellow. And then I'm going to go to color and fill and make this one green. So we have sort of a rainbow effect underneath it. I'm going to group all of these to group, tap and hold the header here, and then just swipe until you get them all. Or you can tap other ones on and off. I'm going to group them together, um, put the group underneath where it belongs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go effects, add effects, and I'm going to go all the way to blur and choose fast box blur. Ooh. 
Good, so that looks pretty good as it is. Now with the text itself, I want to add some stuff to it. So let's go to effects, add effect. I'm gonna to go to procedural. And again, of course, this is all up to your preference. I'm gonna add what we call fractal ridges. That just creates some texture to the layer. You can use position to move it around if you want to be in a certain place. You can change the scale. I'm gonna put the scale down a little bit. Stretch, you can change that. Let's see, but I'm gonna change the color here to about, let's see about maybe, let's, let's make that white. I'm gonna make that orange. There we go. Now, don't worry, this looks hideous now, but it'll look good in a bit. So on top of fractal ridges, uh, I'm going to put a gradient overlay. And with gradient overlay, I'm gonna change this here to like an orange. I'm gonna change this to a white. Or maybe I wanna do the other way around. Well, that looks good. Yeah, I think I wanna do that the other way around. Okay. So now we have sort of like a textured orangey sort of look. Um, I'm going to actually make this a little bit more, um, actually I want it to be watermelon -y, so let me add, change this to red instead. Or maybe make it a little bit more pink. Hmm, that looks okay, I think. Um, it has some texture, it has some orange elements in it, white elements in it, I like. Now one more thing I'd like to do, it's really hard to read like this even though I like the color. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to border and shadow. Uh, we're going to go down to actually to border, add a border. And I'm going to put this as an outside border. And I'm going to make the size a little bit bigger. Huh, there we go. And now we have something that looks basically like what I mentioned before. Now, I don't really want to put any animation on this, so I'm not going to bother setting any of these retiming marks. But of course, if you want to animate it here, you can animate it here, or you can animate it in your project. It depends. If you want to reuse the animation, put the animation in your element. If you want to make the animation different every time, do it in your project. But as you can see right here, we now have our wipe, and we now have a light motion text. So. The final step, time to make the project. Final step. Okay, all the settings are same from before, just cause those are the settings I like. Again, when elements come into projects, they will change their frame rate to adapt to your project. So you don't have to worry about that. And now let's go to plus elements and then add this. And there's our white, ooh, that's looking good. Now we're gonna add the element over top. Ooh, I'm gonna to stretch this out so that it lasts the whole time. Actually, I want this to last five seconds. I want this to be five seconds long. Feel that that works. So as you can see, the intro is still a second. This is still a second and this just loops on the inside. And everything looks pretty seamless. Now that looks all right as an intro. Only one thing missing. The text to light motion should actually disappear with this transition, but it doesn't. So we're going to fix that now. Now we can do this with masking. We go to hexagon wipe tutorial layer, duplicate the layer, and then stick this on top of the text. And then we will highlight the two of these and we'll go create masking group. What a, create masking group will do is it will take the shape of the top layer and put the bottom layers content into it. So let's go create masking group. And now because of the fact that we were duplicating the wipe and we match the shape of the wipe to the content of the text, it now looks like the text comes in and disappears with the white. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions at all, please put it in the comments. Uh, this video will be on YouTube and Instagram stories, but uh, no matter where you watch it, please leave a comment. Um, if you didn't like something, or if you think there's a better way to do it, please show us, please show us links. Cause uh, basically the more you know, the more everybody knows the better, right? So please share. Uh, all right, great. So we'll see you next time.
Bye.